Welcome to Pack of Alham and another pack collection video. It is time to walk it down memory lane. I will explain the jokes and shenanigans of I'm Off to Lie Season 2, which is a series where it's been a lot of fun to look like an idiot. The basic concept of I'm Off to Lie is that I watch an episode so of the Trolled series by DGR and I make predictions about it. For each wrong prediction, I eat a bean boozled jelly bean. A joke or a shenanigan is anything that I find to really make this series priceless, which encouraged me to make I Bluff to Lie Season 2, filled with even more jokes and shenanigans. It could be a little joke that I made, clever editing that I did, something funny in the background, or something that is completely irrelevant to the basic concept of I Will Off to Lie. There are many such types of jokes and shenanigans in DGR's videos and live streams, but they would not be included here if I did not add anything significant of my own to them. I'll show the After Black things in their own video. If you want to control some of my shenanigans for I Will Off to Lie Season 3 and possibly beyond if I decide to do so, and I'm pretty sure I will decide to do Season 4 next year, submit a response to my eye switches form. If anybody has submitted any responses, you can see them in my Ice Witches spreadsheet. And I'll try to do better in Season 4 of actually getting started in the spring instead of waiting until summer. What I'm doing is alternating between an entire episode of Season 2 of explaining shenanigans and then making an ep entire episode of Season 3. Yeah, I had the idea of alternating back and forth. As you can see, this is episode two of, you know, season two jokes and shenanigans. So, does that mean I've already finished season three, episode one? Actually, yes, you can see that. Um, well, at least you can see that I have three parts there. And actually, I did season three, episode one in three parts. Okay, before I get started, editor me will... Okay, I'm confused about time. I'm gonna say before I get started reading the explanations, I, editor me will show you the... See, the next, I mean, next set of files, but... I'm actually going to... read it... before editor me inserts the file clip. Well, I'm, I've already recorded the files, all of the files. Okay, here's the order. I've already made the files, then when I'm done talking too much here, I'll read explanations for season two, then under me we'll put them together and insert the files. You know, ex exploration, whatever. I can just use the plus sign, right? Capture 20210 something. Oh, two zero two one zero four zero eight one. Annoying for A. Alright, I just paused it. It's control. Annoying for B. Okay, so I stopped the recording, found out where I was in the video, and... I Bluff the Lie Season 2 Intro. Hello, my friends! Welcome to Pack of Alham, and this part of this episode of the I Bluff the Lie series, Season 2. The series where it's been a lot of fun to look like an idiot. Signs to Nowhere. Cheeky.
annoying five. It's Saturday. Dave has a new episode. Half mystery. Stereotype news. Annoying 6A. Hello, my friends, welcome to. So let's see. But that wasn't. In here. Oh. Annoying 6B. I'm a back! Oh boy, I think that was a. Remotely re relevant to. And I see that it's wrong. Easy lemon. P switch. Stormfront. Annoying seven. Hey friends, welcome to. Now, I'm gonna have them run all of the colors graphically across the screen that you need to paint along with us each week. Ginger Ross. Ginger Ross. Generosity? Ginger Ross? I thought of a pun. Gingerosity. <laughs> White Lotus. Japanese music. Casseroles. Uh, French vanilla, wacky room. Chocolate cookie, butter cookie dough. So what are you waiting for? Bryce, did you know Geico can save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? So what are you waiting for? DGR Dave to help you plan dessert? Scoop DGR. No French vanilla, Rocky Road, chocolate peanut butter cookie dough. Going through. Jinkiest one. Hello, my How many times have I gone to wrap this up? ASL I. In this case, not anti soft lock, it is American Sign Language. ASL B. ASL L. Okay. Alright, by this point, Editor B should have already just inserted files. Anyway. Wait, wait no, episode, season 2, episode 1. I did it in 7 parts. Well, I did episode 2 in uh, 4 parts. Right? No, wait. Um, season. Yeah, wait. Yeah, yeah, I did episode 2 in 4 parts. So, it. It should be quicker, and then I, I can get to season three, episode two, quicker. Anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, all right, let's see. I've seen this jink before. Yeah, that's because I had watched the live stream or part of it, but fortunately, fortunately I didn't remember most of the trolls, but anyway.
more detail when I get to it here. Oop. I hope that was the pause button that I clicked. American Sign Language. I belong to lie. Series. Season 2. A series where it's been a lot of fun to look like an idiot. For this clever I Belof to Lie intro, I made pictures of myself doing American signs for I, B, A, L, O, F, and T. I cropped around my hands and put them together to, sp to spell, well, you know what word. The music in the background is codenamed Dougwood. Road to Free Cool Orchestral Spy Jazz Music by Shane Ivers. Available on Silverman Sound Studios with a Creative Commons by Attribution License. It was new at the time, and I liked it, so I decided to add it to I Love to Lie Season 2. Here's a quick tangent. I don't think there are any strings in code name Dougwood, but are strings required, especially like violins, violas, cellos, basses, are they required for an orchestral piece? What if you have no strings, but you do have timpani and, and other percussion and brass and winds, at least the flute, could that be considered orchestral? Because those instruments are in code name Dougwood. There's, you know, timpani, brass, other percussion, I mean, there's timpani and, and other percussion and uh, flute. What if you have only strings? Well, it's not a full orchestra. All right, I don't want to talk too much. Have I seen this? Oh. We're gonna see some Nintendo 101 chink. Wait. Did I see some of this in a stream? I did not see the entire thing. I... what? Ooh. I had moved my face cam between the video and its description, just above the name of the troll course. I pretended to look down to read the name. But it seemed very familiar. Had I seen some of it in a live stream? Foreshadowing 101. Woo! 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 <laughs> After dying, Dave made a funny melodic woo noise. After that, I mimicked it. I think. I think that coin, a big coin, what is it? 50. Right. Recorded me thought something. Editor me thought we were coming up to a louder part of Codename Dougwood, so I lowered the volume. Foreshadowing 101. I think... Still uploading. Currently... The video is still uploading. The part seven is C. The video is still. It'll register as text. Okay. The, currently, the video is still uploading. The part seven is still uploading as I'm recording this. So I. Well, we could look at the file on the computer. I'll just wait to put these other time stamps. Put a comma there because I will have a comma separating the two different timestamps. 
and I could prepend it with an apostrophe and it'll recognize the rest of it as a textual value. But, uh, don't really want the apostrophe there and also with the comma it'll register as text instead of a number so we have so the reason that at this point there were no second timestamps which are the ones for where the prediction occurred in the I Believe to Lie season 2 video for episode 1 part 7 is that it was still uploading at the same time that I was recording episode 2 part 1 and I just feel like making this already long sentence, which I could shorten, actually be longer by adding this clause separated with the AND conjunction. Alternatively, I could look at the video file on the computer to determine the second timestamps. Google Sheets, as well as most other spreadsheet programs, can automatically apply formatting to text, but putting an apostrophe at the beginning makes the rest of the text remain as plain text. The apostrophe is not included in the textual value. I had been putting commas after because that also works and I want to have the commas there to separate the timestamps. But I had forgotten the commas for episode 1 part 7. Though if you do put a comma in it at the end. Well, I mean... I mean, maybe you could use as like like, like a place value separator, but anyway, but just a comma by itself at the end. The, it'll just be plain text, but the comma is actually part of that text. Comma. It'll register as text instead of a number, so we have code name bird clock. So. It's 2 o'clock. Alright. Codename Doug Wood was paused so that you can hear the bird clock. The bottom right says 157, and that was the 2 o'clock bird. Codename Modulation. I forgot to focus the spreadsheet. But I can see where we were. Uh, okay. This is a no go. Okay. This time, I again forgot to click on the spreadsheet after clicking the video window. So whatever I pressed on the keyboard, I guess zero was the last key caused the video to go back to the beginning. Now, for the name of this explanation, I had to play with codename Dougwood as I have played with most of the other music. I modulated it from A minor to A sharp minor, or pitch shifted it up by one. Let's see if I can hum these. A minor will be like... And then so H sharp minor or B flat minor B. Wait no, wait a minute. Okay, A to A sharp C to. Okay, I'm a little flat. I should not have done this. Chase me. Uh, what if I go to the left? Will it chase me? I feel because it's at night, it's gonna chase me. No? I think we may- Okay. Dave asked if- asked if this the- Dave asked if the spiky meatball will chase him because it is at night. So I played The Chase by Kevin McLeod. I'm sure you remember the chase as used in episode 1, part 6, at 2 minutes 29 seconds. I found me. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
oh, 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 oh. didn't make it into the video. Oh, 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 oh. That's me. That's me. Live Valium. So I took pack Valium. Put no, no, no. Change pack and put live. Live Valium. Hello. You. Hello, YouTube. Hello, YouTube. Yo, you forgot something. <laughs> it's it's the yo of the bite of YouTube that they forgot. Yes, yeah. I did not watch the entire stream, and I kind of forget what happened. Out of what I did see. Editor me zoomed in so that you can see my chat message better. A was like, hello, YouTube, but like, it was just the letter U. Then B was like, yo, you forgot something, but like, B was not just talking to A, and, and the yo, you know, the Y and the O are the two letters that A omitted in YouTube. You hear me, I? You hear me, I? By the way, of course, I had to modulate code name Dugwood again, this time from A sharp minor to B minor. Uh, or pitch shift up by another one. That's two total. B minor be like. B, D, natural, and then F sharp. YouTube video jank. Here. No! Okay, what is hap- what did I click on that time? <laughs> All good things must come to an end. Uh, okay, okay, so lore out. Uh oh. Lore. What? What is YouTube doing? If that ain't jinky, I don't. I don't know what jinky is. Hmm. Yeah. Alright, yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah, that's jinky. Right, 155. I forgot to focus the spreadsheet again, and I pressed a whole bunch of letters, so a few crazy things happened. The video briefly played, then paused. Then, it skipped ahead and played again. Then, it paused again and closed captioning was turned on. Finally, it played again and went to the mini player. Let's talk about keyboard shortcuts for YouTube videos, which explains these so-called crazy things. When I had forgotten to focus the, the spreadsheet, I typed, I called it. Let's go letter by letter. If you are on a desktop or laptop, you can press the following keys to play along. I toggles the mini player. Space plays or pauses the video. C turns closed captioning on or off. L skips ahead. To see how that makes sense, try pressing J and K, the two keys to the left of it. On a standard QWERTY keyboard. When the mini player is not showing, T toggles theater mode. By the way, of course, I had to mod... you get the idea. C minor now. Three total pitch shifts. 
Grammarly could not give me the definition of jankiest, so I did a quick search to confirm the definition of janky. Woo again. Bad <laughs> how the the teaser at the beginning. Woo. <laughs> Here is that part that was teased earlier. After dying, Dave made a funny melodic woo noise. After that, I mimicked it, mimicked it again. These are not intended to be tongue twisters. Well, maybe a couple of them, but not any of the ones I've just read here, like in a little bit ago. But I think I can say some tongue twisters, like, you know, you need new, 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 new. Oh, I said it a few days ago. You know, you need unique New York. Okay, well, I said it that time. Or I slit the sheet. The sheet I slit, and on the slitted sheet I sit. Well, I mean, it helps if I slow down. Okay, I need to go for it exactly one minute from where I started. 15 minutes, 32 seconds to 16 minutes, 32 seconds. So if I, oh, look at that. How did I pause it at something two? Anyway, from there can go like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and another one, six. Well, another lot of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Uh, 45 degree lava bubble. Oh, 45 degree angle right there. <laughs> that makes no sense. Oh, 45 degree angle right there. <laughs> that makes no sense. Dave had asked if it moved. No, I think I meant to put moved. At a 45 degree angle. I think I'm down right. I what? Well, unless they come out of the launcher, then like horizontal, and then they go down. Oh, 45 degree angle right there. <laughs> that makes no sense. Anyway, let's continue with the explanation. I went back and found the lava bubble that was pointing in a 45 degree angle, but it did not move in that direction. Okay, no, it was just pointing that way. Its velocity was still vertical. Down. I said its velocity was... Wait. Dave had asked if it moved at a 45 degree angle. I went back and found the lava bubble that was pointing at a 45 de degree angle, but it did not move in that direction. I said its velocity was down. But velocity is composed of speed and direction. For example, 50 miles per hour north and 50 miles per hour east have the same speed but different velocities because the directions are different. 65 miles per hour west and 30 miles per hour west have the same direction but different velocities because the speeds are different. 10 miles per hour northwest and 15 miles per hour southwest have different velocities because the speeds and directions are different. I specified that down was just the direction part of the velocity, and I did not know the speed. I what? Okay, the direction part of the velocity. Don't know the speed. <laughs> Two objects, if they if they have the same, so for two different objects, while they have the same velocity, they will have the same distance between them. So let's uh, say this object is moving some speed that way. This object over here is also moving the same speed in the same direction, which is the same velocity. They have the same distance between them. But as soon as any of their velocities differs from the other, could be speed, could be direction, could be both. Well, 
Well, not necessarily. Their distances would be different. Well, well I mean, the, their distances would converge, but, well, I talked about lin like linear, but last time. Okay, it is true that if they have the same linear velocity, they'll have the same distance between them, but it's possible for one object's linear velocity to be different from the other. Uh, say one object's stationary in the center. One object is going all the way around in a circle. Its linear velocity is changing, like over like it has this same speed. Well, actually, speed doesn't matter. It's moving in a circle. This is at the center of the circle. The distance will remain the same. Okay, if two objects are moving in the s in straight lines with different linear velocities, and, and they each maintain their linear velocities, then the distances between the objects will change. I almost talked over my own head, but I mean, it's basic physics. Basic math, really. Well, I um, mean, angular velocity can make it more complicated. I might just do the rest of season, or I mean, well, season two, episode two in their own video, or maybe I'll just do two and three in their own video, and then I'll just do part four in the same video where I start season three, episode two. Right. Woo, quartified. Did that lava bubble move at a 45 degree angle? No. Okay, so hit this. Here is another quartification. This time, it is with that woo that I described twice earlier. To make them... I first cut around the thing I want to quartify. I, I mean, that's part of it. Um, somehow, the video after this one got shifted. So as, as you can see, I accidentally have, you know, that, um, I accidentally have that video shifted slightly, and you know, that, uh, yeah, there you go, that direction. And so you can see black like, up there and around there and down. Uh, fortunately, nothing significant was cut off. Only just a little bit down there, but that's okay. Um, See how tedious it is to get it to the exact timestamp that I want it. Ethernight Club. So I don't think we want. Finally, some music that is not codenamed Dugwood. Not that there's anything wrong with Codename Dugwood. There's not. It's good music, but I just used it so much in this video already that it's time for a change. This is Ethernight Club, but it does not play for long. I left the first measure's pitch shift at zero. I pitch shifted each of the next three measures up by one more. Why did I do that? I was playing with the music again. 
You can hear two synths playing at the same time, and one of them has a descending chromatic melody with a common note. That is, in the first measure, it plays a melody with A and E. Not to be confused with the television network. So, that has an A and an E. And the second measure, the melody is with A flat and E. So, so the two measures go by. Was that little sharp on the E there? Okay. Um, I, I don't think I'm the best singer, and I don't think I'm the worst singer. Perfect pitch helps. I can he I can hear a note. I can tell you what it is. So I'm just humming a random note, or or just glissando a bit. I'm distracted. I need to get to this. Well, wow, this is quick. I'll, I'll glissando and stop somewhere, and I'll tell you where I stopped. That's C sharp. I can uh, open online sequencer, close my eyes, click somewhere. I can tell you what note that is. But I'm not going to do it because that will take too much time. I'm going to start over that sentence. My microphone slid down. Like, I, I had it up here. Usually the thing locks it, but then it slid down like that. I'll just start over the entire explanation since uh, this train derailed. Uh, okay, let's hop on a new train. Okay. Unless that happens. Finally, some music that is not codenamed Dougwood. This is Ethernet Club, but it does not play for long. I left the first measure's pitch shift at zero. I pitch shifted each of the next three measures up by one more. Why did I do that? I was playing with the music again. You can hear two synths playing at the same time, and one of them has a descending chromatic melody with a common note. Descending means it goes down. Chromatic means it by half steps, so notes that are next to each other. Um, and the common note is E. And the descending chromatic part is that it I first first uses A, that is A flat, which is the same as G sharp. And then after that uses G and okay. mm. That is, in the first measure, it plays a melody with A and E, not to be confused with the television network. In the second measure, the melody is with A flat and E, then in the third measure with G and E. The fourth measure has G and D. With the pitch shifting, it sounds like the melody keeps the A and the bottom note goes up from E to F to F sharp and back to F. Why back to F? Well, originally it was D, which is a whole step to pitch shift down from E. The previous measure was pitch shifted the uh, yeah. the previous measure was pitch shifted to have it be at F sharp and I pitch shifted it up one more. Up one and down two results in a net of down 1, thus back to F from F sharp. Meant to do it like a 25, but um. Scott Schusslaw, is yet another terrible wordle suggestion? Or, or yet another terrible suggestion? I did see recent. Oh, one of my class assignments was graded. Why am 
I talking too much? I did notice Scott and Rings did something else together recently, but I'm not, or earlier today, I'm not gonna watch it now, maybe, maybe later. Half mystery steps. <laughs> I copied and pasted Half Mystery to four different audio tracks and delayed them by one measure. So the first one plays and when it gets to one measure, that's when the next one starts playing. Um, half Mystery is in C minor. I pitch shifted the second up by three to make it a minor third. Uh, then I pitch shifted the third up by I got confused what I meant by third um, okay so I kept the first one at zero so see my uh, pitch shift to the second up by three to make it a minor third then I pitch shifted the third up by seven to make it a fifth of the scale Basic music chords usually have the root note, the third, and the fifth. That is called a triad because there are three notes, and tri means three. And typically it skips notes in the scale because it doesn't you know, skip more than that. It's not really a basic chord of too big of a gap, and then if it's too close together, it doesn't sound good. The difference between a major chord and a minor chord is the note in the middle, which is the third of the scale. Minor thirds are three half steps up from the root, and major thirds are four half steps up from the root. Half mystery is in C minor, which I already said, so I used the minor third. What did I do with the fourth copy? I pitch shifted it up by 10 to make it a minor 7th, which is a whole step to pitch shift down from the octave. The result of all this is four copies of Half Mystery playing in C minor, E flat minor, G minor, and B flat minor, with each higher pitched copy playing one measure behind the previous. Am I getting too tactical? Anything wishing over your head, even though I'm trying to make it a easy explanation? It's basic music theory. Oh yeah, just remember we had physics earlier. We did see that. We did see that. Didn't we? I was looking at the bingo board to figure out if I missed anything. Where was reasonable CPs on the first board? Well, it wasn't, but if it was, it would be marked. Recorded me was sure we saw a fireball out of question mark block. Editor me looked or, yeah, editor me looked back at the footage and found two instances of a fireball out of question mark block. I put them on the screen, one above the other. Um, at the same time, and lined up the times of when Mario hit a question mark block, releasing a fireball. Last one. 
Cat recorder. Okay, that's not me. In the chat. That wasn't me in the chat. Oh, how did this get in the middle? I thought I saw another message from Live Valham in the chat, which would be me, but then I saw that it was not me. Then I saw the recorder controls and a timer in the middle. I forgot that I moved it earlier, which you can see at 18 minutes 53 seconds in this I Will Have to Lie Season 2 video. Vid video, not video, because it's a D. Okay, let's go to 18. 53. If you want to see uh, which things I'm saying are actually in the script, you look at the Google Doc in the description. And okay. my 36. And one of the bingo boards was in about the number of predictions being 100. But I think so. So yeah, that's where I moved it, but then later I forgot that I moved it. Okay, for, uh, 40 minutes, and I'm gonna, I don't know, say 20 for the files. I don't know, might be more, might be less, probably, um, probably not more. So I'll say it's an hour hour long video, but anyway, if you are smart, click the like button. If you're genius, click the subscribe button. You will see me next time with uh, a, a part two. Uh, uh, by the way, how many Easter eggs did you see in season three, episode one? Since there are three videos, there are three parts, that's 30 total eggs. Yes. 10 in there, 10 in there, 10 in there. And all the eggs are guaranteed to be after. The, so for all the eggs in each video will be after the teaser not included in the teasers and there will be before for the five seconds of black so the no easter eggs in the explanations would be after the teaser there's actually five seconds of black i think it's five in the middle separating the explanations with you know with season three then after that, it's we have the teaser. And the teasers are things at the you know at the beginning of you know episode part. We have some clips of things that'll come later. The teaser is before I say welcome to Packville. You know, so it'll be after. All the Easter eggs will be after the teaser and before the five seconds of black at the, at the end. The five seconds of black will be after. I, I say something, something like, if you're smart, click the like button. If you're genius, click the subscribe button. See me next time. Until then, take care. And there will be no Easter eggs in episode two or episode three, etc. But... At the end of the last part of the last episode of season three, I will reveal the locations of all ten eggs in there, all ten eggs in there, and all ten eggs in there. I've already said my outro, I'm not going to say it again, but I, I will say again, take care. Would you like fries with that? No!